Yes, ma'am. I remember growing up in the glorious days of the 90s where each summer meant a major blockbuster popcorn movie, likely starring Will Smith. We got such gems like Independence Day, Men in Black, Wild Wild West, The Truman Show, Armageddon, and many, many more. Over time, these sort of died out when we got to the MCU. But now, some genius in Hollywood decided to revive the trend with Twisters, a pseudo-sequel to a 90s classic. But is the movie any good? Does it stand up well to the summer popcorn flick heyday? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the cesspool that is modern Hollywood. Before we get into this, make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out with continuing to grow and it's totally free. Disaster movies have been a Hollywood staple ever since the earliest known example of Deluge in 1933. We got a few in the 50s and 70s with a War of the Worlds adaptation in 1953 and Airport in 1970. But it wasn't until the advent of CGI in the 90s that we got our first truly epic sized disaster movies with the likes of Daylight, Outbreak, Armageddon, Dante's Peak, and the very fun original Twister movie starring the late Bill Paxton and Philip Seymour Hoffman, Helen Hunt, and Carrie Elways. The original Twister debuted in 1996 and was largely overshadowed by that summer's major blockbuster popcorn flick, Independence Day. But upon a recent rewatch, I saw that the movie held up rather well 28 years later, which begs the question, why a sequel? Well, the answer is easy, my dear viewer. As I've mentioned in a ton of my other videos, Hollywood has completely run out of ideas and has been resorting to sequels and remakes for the better part of 20 years. The thing about cinema is, it's an endless well of content. You could dig up some old B-movie from the 1950s, which was full of B-movies, and either remake it or have a sequel. For example, The Color of Money, starring Tom Cruise, debuted in 1986, a full 25 years after The Hustler, starring Paul Newman. 28 years after the original Twister, we get Twisters. Real original, guys. Wonder what the inevitable sequel will be. Twisters with a Z. Anyway, the movie stars Daisy Edgar Jones as Kate Carter, a meteorologist with a checkered past. We also get Hollywood's it guy, Glenn Powell, as Tyler Owens. The story begins with Kate and her college friends chasing down tornadoes to study them in her native Oklahoma. Kate theorizes that she can kill a tornado, but then when she miscalculates how big this particular tornado is, everything goes tits up and her team dies in the ensuing aftermath. I was a little disappointed to see that Sally Draper, I mean Kiernan Shipka, dies in the first 10 minutes of the movie because I really do want to see her stand on her own after her iconic Mad Men performance. But I digress. So after this disaster, Kate moves to New York to work as a meteorologist, but just as she's still grappling with her past, it creeps back out at her with a visit from her former friend Javi, played by Anthony Ramos. Javi needs Kate's expertise in tracking tornadoes to support his fledgling company. So they go off back to Oklahoma and run into Tyler Owens, who is a YouTuber storm chaser. Pretty awesome. And he is the absolute polar opposite of every single male character that Hollywood has shat out over the last 15 years. He's cocky and brash, he's good looking, and just exudes that positive alpha charisma that's anathema to all the beta male cuck soy boys that Hollywood likes to spew out. So together they go about wrangling a tornado to test out Kate's theories. On the surface, this film is a fun, unpretentious summer popcorn flick that just sets out to entertain people. It doesn't have any progressive messaging like climate change or feminism girl power BS. It never takes itself too seriously either. But underneath it lies something a little deeper that the filmmakers probably didn't set out to do. There's a lesson in Twisters. Hear me out. Now, I won't say Twisters is Shawshank Redemption by any means. What I will say though is that it contains a lesson not for the viewer, but to the entirety of Hollywood itself. Entertain people. Let them escape their boring, mundane lives for a couple of hours 
without preaching to them about any causes, be they liberal or conservative. People are just tired of that. The film doesn't contain any progressive girl boss infallible Mary Sue tropes either. Kate begins the movie a young, naive college girl with big dreams of changing the world, but then life gives her a nice slap in the face. So she recovers and gradually finds herself regaining the courage and outlook she used to have. By the end of the movie, she has the confidence to wrangle her own tornado. At no point does she berate or otherwise belittle Tyler Owens, who provides a lot of the charm of this movie, and that's in no small part due to the talents of Glenn Powell. I swear, this guy is everywhere lately, and we're all the better for it. I'll admit, I'm a Glenn Powell fanboy through and through. Some people may be claiming that the era of the Hollywood star is over. Not me. I'll go see a movie just because Glenn Powell is in it. Dude is one charming mofo. It doesn't work against him in Twisters, but it does work against Daisy Edgar Jones. Hollywood has had an obsession over the past couple of years with a plain Jane look. Stars like Dakota Johnson and Daisy Edgar Jones have shot up in stardom over the past few years for some unknown reason. Now don't get me wrong, I wouldn't throw either of them out of bed, but what I'm asking is, can they headline an entire movie on their own? And the answer seems to be no, or maybe. In my first big video on the channel, I reviewed a movie called Where the Crawdads Sing, based on the book of the same name and starring Daisy Edgar Jones. In that video, I mentioned liking the film and seeing what Daisy Edgar Jones will get up to, and two years later we see her in Twisters. She's not bad by any stretch of the imagination. She's a capable actress, but she simply can't match the level of charisma that Glenn Powell has, and that's a shame. But I will say the two characters do share quite a bit of on-screen chemistry. Not to the level of Glenn Powell and Sidney Sweeney and anyone but you, but certainly they bounce well off each other. The chemistry builds well over the course of the film and reaches a crescendo at the very end when Glenn Powell chases after her at the airport. The fact that we didn't get a kiss at the end of the film to me suggests that we've got a pretty strong chance of a sequel in which the characters do become romantically involved. In the original Twister, there was a romantic subplot between Bill Paxton and Helen Hunt, and that romance worked very well just because of the chemistry between the actors on screen. However, I will say that the original Twister did provide a bit of balance between the leads in terms of chemistry. Bill Paxton wasn't nearly as charming as Glenn Powell, so he didn't overshadow the very cute and sweet Helen Hunt. In Twisters, Glenn Powell clearly overshadows Daisy Edgar Jones, and that's a shame because she's not able to truly unfurl her wings and act to her full potential. It'll be very interesting to see how that character dynamic evolves in the inevitable sequel. I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about some of the negatives in this movie. Having just seen the movie Kneecap, which I'm also reviewing for the channel, I had been in a mindset of efficient story writing. And I have to say that this is where Twisters falls a little short. At two hours, the film doesn't overstay its welcome, but the story could have been a little more tightly written. Let me show you what I mean. The whole subplot with Javi's company providing real-time data to a real estate developer vulture could have been entirely left out. And speaking of Javi, it seemed to me that the writers and filmmakers really didn't know what to do with him. At one point, he's Kate's classmate, then her colleague, and at another point in the film, his co-worker berates Kate as his little girlfriend. A way that the story could have been a little tighter would be to have made Javi less of an integral part of the story. As it stands now, he's not really a character, but merely a plot device to bring Kate back to Oklahoma and not much else. He's really the call in the hero's journey. Having already mentioned that this movie lacks any sort of progressive messaging, I will talk about another lesson it imparts on not only the viewer, but also Hollywood itself. You absolutely can have a strong female character. She just needs to be written well and have a character arc. And this is where Twisters excels beyond the types of movies we've had lately. Take a character like Ray Palpatine. 
She starts out the story as automatically awesome at everything she does, and so there's nowhere for her character to evolve to. Meanwhile, in Twisters, Daisy Edgar Jones's character evolves from this idealistic college student, undergoes a tragedy which takes her five years to work through, and she accepts the help of a man in her life in order to achieve her goals. It's really nice to see a movie not making the female character infallible and the male character to be a fumbling idiot. Hollywood should take note of Twisters in that regard. Having grown up in the 90s, which was replete with summer blockbuster popcorn flicks, I'm glad to see their return with Twisters. See Hollywood? It's okay to have a charming and smart male character like the one portrayed by Glenn Powell and a woman that needs help from a man. By not focusing on either identity politics or progressive messaging, Twisters achieved what few films in Hollywood are able to do lately, entertain people. I had fun with this one, and I definitely recommend checking this movie out in theaters. But what do you guys think about all this? Did you like Twisters? And do you think it deserves another sequel? Please do let me know down below in the comments, and as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.